Imagine a future where every student's academic journey from kindergarten to university and beyond is seamlessly recorded under a single digital ID. No lost mark sheets, no hassle of verification, no struggle with multiple documentation processes. Sounds like a dream, doesn't it? India's automated permanent academic account registry, a PAR ID, precisely aims to achieve the impossible sounding dream by creating a unified academic identity for every learner in the country. What is an APAR ID? APAR ID, also popularly known as the One Nation, One Student ID initiative, has been envisioned under NEP 2020 and the National Credit and Qualifications Framework. The objective of APAR is ambitious. It will act as the academic equivalent of a PAN card, linking admissions, scholarships, internships, certifications, credit transfers, and even employment applications under one unique identifier. Why does APAR ID matter? Education in India has long been plagued by fragmented record keeping. Students store their mark sheets, extracurricular certificates, and twin credentials separately, often leading to inefficiencies and loss of crucial data. APAR ID solves this problem by creating a holistic student portfolio, allowing verified access to a student's achievements anytime, anywhere. Through its integration with DigiLocker and the Academic Bank of Credits, the APAR ID ensures smooth portability of educational credentials across institutions, reducing bureaucratic bottlenecks. Furthermore, this initiative aligns with NEP 2020's goal of multidisciplinary modular education. Students will be able to earn credits from different institutions, aggregate them and seamlessly transfer them across universities. The economic and governance benefits of APAR are substantial. With centralized digital verification, employers and institutions can instantly validate academic credentials, reducing fraud and misinformation. A 2023 Aspiring Minds report revealed that 25% of resumes in India contain discrepancies, leading to trust issues in hiring processes. APAR will help curb this issue by providing a transparent, verifiable system. Additionally, the Ministry of Education can use APAR data to analyze dropout rates, education gaps, and skill distributions, paving the way for evidence-driven policymaking. The Challenges and Risks However, APAR's sweeping changes are accompanied by significant concerns. Privacy risks loom large, particularly for minors. The Supreme Court's ruling in Justice K.S. Puttaswamy v. Union of India stated that Aadhaar cannot be made mandatory for school enrollment. Yet, APAR is hard linked to Aadhaar. Moreover, under Section 9 Part 1 of the DPDP Act 2023, parental consent is mandatory for processing children's data, raising legal questions about the validity of bulk registration drives in the schools. There's also the issue of lack of legislative backing. Unlike Aadhaar, which receives statutory protection under the Aadhaar Act of 2016, a park currently lacks a legal framework that defines its governance, usage and safeguards. Identity expert Kalia Young previously criticized the Aadhaar rollout, noting it lacked regulatory preparation. Could APAR be repeating history? Additionally, cybersecurity threats pose a serious risk. With APAR integrating data from DigiLocker, ABC and other platforms as well, it becomes a high-value target for hackers and data breaches. The Internet Freedom Foundation has raised concerns over data ownership, accessibility and whether students can delete their records or not. Without clear policies, there's a risk of third-party exploitation, where edtech companies and private institutions could use data for profiling and targeted learning, a move eerily reminiscent of China's social credit system. Another major issue is the digital divide. While APAR seeks to improve accessibility, 60% of government schools lack proper training for APAR uploads, according to a National Institute of Educational Planning and Administration survey. This raises questions about whether rural, tribal and economically weaker students will be left behind, exacerbating existing educational inequalities instead of resolving them. The Road Ahead to ensure that a power ID becomes a boon rather than a bane, several corrective measures must be taken. A dedicated APAR Act similar to the Aadhaar Act is essential, ensuring voluntary participation, strict consent mechanisms, and the right to opt out or delete data. Following Justice B. N. Sri Krishna Committee's recommendations of privacy by design, the system should incorporate data minimization, encryption, and access transparency. Moreover, Parental and student control must be prioritized. A real-time dashboard should allow parents and students to view, modify and restrict access to data, similar to LinkedIn's privacy settings. Schools must also be equipped with vernacular apartheids and training programs to ensure digital inclusion. 
particularly in underprivileged areas. Most importantly, an independent regulatory body should oversee APAR's functioning, with RTI accessibility and parliamentary oversight ensuring accountability. Global best practices such as the EU's GDPR and Estonia's National Digital Identity System can offer valuable insights into striking a balance between efficiency and individual rights. The final question, are we ready? APAR ID stands at the crossroads of revolutionary reform and ethical dilemma. It has the potential to transform education in India, ensuring seamless learning pathways and transparent record keeping. However, with the necessary legal, ethical and security safeguards, it risks becoming a tool for surveillance rather than empowerment. As we embrace the digital future, we must ask ourselves, can we ensure that technological efficiency does not come at the cost of individual freedoms? Will a part truly enhance education accessibility or will it deepen the digital divide? And most crucially, are we prepared to safeguard the next generation's academic identity in a world increasingly defined by data?